you might think that we're going to start with elastic collisions and that inelastic would be harder. Well, you might think so, but you'd be wrong. We're actually going to start with inelastic collisions. And first, I'll just point out one thing about them is that the kinetic energy that you lose uh, may be converted to uh, potential energy, like maybe um, elastic, like a sort of spring, or maybe a compression. The point is you might get it back later. It might be stored, right? So maybe convert it to potential, or it might be lost or lost. And that's the case, maybe the collision heats something up, it's pretty much gone, maybe it generates sound, you're not going to get those back. So there can be a lot of mechanisms behind how you lose the kinetic energy in an inelastic collision. So we're actually going to do a subset of inelastic collisions. We're going to do a perfectly inelastic collision. Right, so perfectly inelastic collision, and that basically means when the two objects stick together, and have the same, and therefore have the same V final. They essentially make one big object. So we'll look at this um, on our air track in a minute, and the two masses we'll be using to demo everything are this one and this one, or to get started, they're, they're the same mass, and this is the elastic end, so these are springs, and when they hit, they bounce back, and this is the perfectly inelastic end. I put some tape on them, and when they hit, they're stuck together. All right, so these are the little masses we're going to be thinking about. Okay, so let's draw a perfectly inelastic collision. Let's see, so you would have um, mass one, it's going to come in with some velocity v1 naught, and you might have mass two, it's going to come with some velocity v2 naught. But then the point of a perfectly inelastic collision is that in the end, they make one mass. It has a mass m1 plus m2. And it moves with some velocity. And it might be this way, it might be that way. I'm just going to draw, and I'm not going to put a number on, I'm just going to call it v final to remind you that it really is one object that's moving when it's complete. So this is inelastic because some energy went into the bond, the binding of holding these two together. Something is stored in whatever is holding those two together. In this case, it's the tape. So even though we may have lost kinetic energy, we always conserve momentum. There's no external uh, impulses here. So the P, the momentum initial, or I'll call it P naught, must equal P final. So P naught is going to be M1 V1 naught plus M2 V2 naught. Now, the velocity is a vector, the direction matters. Right, so we, we do have to treat this as a vector, but often in 1D we don't write it as a vector. If we can just remember to think of these as the vector component, even though it's 1D, the component is just the, the size of the vector. But what I'm saying is, if it's to the right, we're going to define that as positive, say plus x, and if it's to the left, we'll call that negative. So in a problem, when you go plugging in v2 naught, you need to plug in a negative number if it's going that way. Okay, so I'm not writing the negatives into the equations. I'm making the equations work all the time. And then you put in whether it's negative or positive when you plug in the value. Um, let's see, the final momentum would just be what? It would be the sum, m1 plus m2, times v final. There you go. And we know that the initial and the final momentum have to be the same because we have conservation of momentum, so we say since 
P naught equals uh, P final. We just equate these. And we're usually looking for the final velocity of the two masses together. So if you just want to equate these, imagine then on this side you have the sum times Vf. So to solve it, you just divide this part by m1 plus m2. So since those have to be equal, we can do a little algebra in our head and say it must be m1 v1 naught plus m2 v2 naught over m1 plus m2. And that is the velocity of the final object. All right. So let's look at that. Um, let's see. Let's think of a few cases. So here we have our two inelastic colliders. And we could say if they're coming right at each other and the initial momentum, if they're coming at each other the same mass, the same uh, velocity, the initial momentum is zero. Therefore, the final momentum should be zero. So one case we could do is make the masses equal, they are equal, and the velocity is equal. Then you're going to get zero in the numerator. Therefore, the final velocity should also be zero. So let's turn it on and see if that happens. All right, so I'm going to slide them at about the same speed right at each other, and we'll see what we get. Pretty close to zero. So they move a little bit because I'm not great at getting them at the same speed. So let's do it again, about the same speed, and they should pretty much stop. There you go, stop. Uh, let's see if we can think of another interesting case to try. So that was opposite velocities. What if we have one sitting still? Let's have mass two just sitting still, and mass one hits it. So mass one, V1 naught is positive, V2 naught is zero. What the equations would tell us is this term is zero, it's gone, is that the final velocity, it's going to have to go down. Right? We have to conserve momentum. So we had a small light thing moving fast, but when they stick together, the mass goes up. If the mass goes up, the velocity goes down. So you can see the final velocity is a fraction of the initial velocity based on the increase in mass. And that will, of course, happen. Let's see. So the red will be number two sitting still. And the yellow is going to come in and hit it, and it should slow down. Sure enough, slow down. Let's see, another case we could do is let them move at different velocities and let them approach each other. So let's say, let's um, have the one from the, this way have a, let's, let's have this one come faster, right? So mass one is moving uh, to the right in the positive direction, kind of slow. Mass two is moving from uh, the left in the negative direction fast. They have the same mass, so you know this one has more momentum, more momentum, so it should win. The net momentum should be this way, so they should collide and go this way. And we could also look at the equations here. If the masses are the same, they're each weighted the same. If this has a bigger negative velocity, then in this subtraction, it's going to come out negative. So let's check that as well with our perfectly inelastic masses. Let's see, I said this one will be slow, and this one will come fast, so we shouldn't end up going that way, right? So this one's slow, and this one's fast, and it goes that one. So you can see the equation works. We could get into having the masses be different, and then they would still work, but it's just not as intuitive uh, when they're different. So this is one that you could probably derive fairly easily if you had to, but it's also worth memorizing. Perfectly inelastic collision is just the initial momentum, and to get this velocity, it's the initial momentum divided by the mass once they've uh, stuck together.